The Mono is the name given to the dock area that runs by the Doge's Palace, this big building that we see on the right. And this particular view of the Molo, looking west, highlights the Doge's Palace, one of the great architectural wonders of Venice. And anyone who'd been to Venice knew that there was no place from which you could go up and see this view. Canaletto had such mastery of his craft that he was able to show us things that the human eye couldn't possibly see from that perspective. In other words, you can't actually get that view, but Canaletto has shown it to us anyway. Particularly, you can see both the vanishing point toward the dock side. The rhythm here is the rhythm of geometric shapes and lines. The lines of the buildings, the line of the molo itself, the line of the dock. While the painting itself is not neoclassical, Canaletto's paintings appeal to the new interest in the classical form of architecture and art which is called neoclassical. So it's all sort of hinting at a geometrical composition that is under the entire view that you're seeing. So that gives it that balance and it gives it that sense that people were attracted to of things being sort of neat and clean lined. It may puzzle people to think of Canaletto as primarily painting the architecture because almost half of the painting is sky, but he is using that sky still in a way that ultimately plays up the architecture through the way he uses the light and through the way he contrasts that band of light clouds um, that goes up in a diagonal and toward the palace with the darker clouds. His earlier paintings have a lot more contrast between light and dark, and in that respect, they're more Baroque. They have a lot more variety of people, and he lets things get a little rough. This is a painting called Rio de Minticanti, which is Beggar's Canal. It has some similarities in its rhythm and in its use of line and perspective, but it's much more dramatic in terms of the light and the dark. Uh, you can also see things like laundry hanging on the line. You can see uh, disintegration of the stucco on the building. So you're seeing, in a sense, the backside of the building. So this is not a view that a tourist would have been comfortable with because it's the sense of you're seeing the real Venice. You're seeing the behind the scenes of the theater that was Venice. Canaletto was a theater painter and his father was a theater painter. So this is part of his background that he brought to his work is the sense of the theatrical and the sense of setting the scene. Uh, if you look at the Molo, at the dock itself, you can see people from all over the world. You can see men and women, and you can see people of different social statuses. And clumps or groups are talking to each other. Some people are, we don't know, maybe going to the boats to greet people who are coming in from their day out fishing, or perhaps the gondola in the very far left has taken some tourists around the canal and it's coming back in. He's included the Doge's barge, which is this large barge you see with the red and yellow striped awning, silk awning on it, which the Doge used for informal travel. The barge used for ceremonies was immense and impressive. They were so closely allied to the ocean that their leader, the Doge, in fact, went through the ritual of marrying the sea every year. Um, and in this ritual, they threw a ring into the water to represent the marriage. I think he really is about depicting a moment in the life of Venice. It's an idealized view of Venice. 
and he's playing with composition and light and color, which were the primary characteristics of Venice that people spoke about. And as well-heeled young men, and particularly young men of status uh, on the continent, but most particularly in England, uh, began to do what they called the Grand Tour, which is they were, as part of their finishing process for their education, um, they would travel the great places of civilization. So Venice was one of these. It's nice if you can take back something tangible that both reminds you of your trip but also shows other people what you've done. And of course, they didn't have cameras then, so the only way they could do this would be through having a painter produce a view for them. Because these were almost exclusively wealthy young men, they could afford to commission these paintings. A man named George Proctor commissioned this particular view. George Proctor was actually not a particularly young man at the time that he commissioned his view, but what he was was a new gentleman. This was his way of taking part in the Grand Tour, as a proper gentleman would have. He just came to being a proper gentleman too late in life, but he still wanted a piece of that status. For the English gentleman, possessing a souvenir of this trip to the continent brought the continent into his home in England and attached him to that in a more permanent way. <laughs>